The internet's changed everything. It's actually changed the way that young people manage information, the way adult versus how adults do. Do you all use, uh, you use email regularly, obviously? Yeah. Um, are you using Microsoft Outlook? So what's, a, so what's your email client? What do you use? Outlook or anything else? Outlook, Outlook. So do you have that folder list running down the left-hand side? Mm -hmm. And you keep on adding subfolders to your folders? Yeah. So eventually when you want to find something, you've put it inside some kind of maze of folders and it's five or six deep. That's what we do as adults. We take information and we subdivide it into smaller and smaller categories until we're comfortable that we've distilled it enough that we can find it. Young people don't have to. They leave everything in a pile and Google can search through it for them. In fact, Google's email service, Gmail, doesn't even let you make folders. It doesn't let you really file things away. You can put a label on something, but it can search through every email you've ever sent or received faster than you can possibly organize it. That's a different way to manage information. Anybody here use Google Maps ever? Put your hands up. Or Google Earth? Yeah? Google Maps is the best, isn't it? True that. Um, what was the first thing y'all looked at on Google Maps or Google Earth? Your house. <laughs> so it used to be that when you wanted to look at your house, you would do this. <laughs> now you do this and expect that a satellite is going to send you photos of your home. Well, imagine growing up in a world where that was always the case. It completely changes your relationship with information. It's already starting to have an interesting impact in academia. We'll talk a bit about the relationship between students and information a little later on, but it's a big one. Three other quick values. Diversity is a big one. Uh, this is a far more diverse young person than previous generations. And this is one of the places where there's a difference between Canada and the US and uh, where we start to see some difference along um, socioeconomic and racial lines. Nonetheless, your typical young North American these days has a more diverse experience in their life than any previous generation. Partially is uh, due to levels of immigration in both Canada and the United States. It's also due to the kind of media you can uh, familiarize yourself with if you want to. If you want a good example of this, I always look at two things. One is music, where you can go, and I'm sorry to use this kind of language, but you can go to the whitest parts of this country and still find people listening to hip hop, which is really interesting. You know, suburban white boys on Long Island who have nothing in common with the African American experience, I would imagine, still feel that they can identify with hip hop. And that's what I mean about that diversity of experience. Or go to your local food court in a mall. 15 years ago, it would have been burgers, fries, pizza, maybe chicken. Now there's a vegetarian place, there's a Chinese place, there's a Japanese place. I don't mean to sort of be using a, a really simplistic example or a trite example, but it's true that this young person is just used to a diversity of experience. And whether you live in a particularly diverse community or not, you're going to get some of it. Two other quick values. Empowerment is a big one. Companies like mine have been asking young people what they think for 10 or 15 years now and they know that they have a sort of a say in their world. For you guys, that probably means they talk back more. But truthfully, it means that they expect to take a little more charge of their life at an earlier age. And what sews all of this together is technology. You wouldn't be hearing a thing about a kind of youthful explosion without wireless and the internet, which have had a huge impact on how young people can interact with their world. All right, how are we doing so far? People are good, any questions? Bueller, no, all right. Okay, so I've got a couple of trends to take you guys through. I'm gonna start with this one on youth culture because I often get asked questions about how culture works for young people and I wanna take you through this. After that, we're gonna talk about sex and drugs. Okay. Yeah, see I have to keep that one to the end. The single biggest question I get asked by advertisers, educators, uh, administrators, it doesn't matter, is what kind of messages do young people respond to? as if there's a simple answer for that. There isn't. The truth of the matter is that these days, you have to look at media, advertising, and culture in aggregate, because there has never been as big a shift in media habits as there have in the past decade, and it's a critical thing for you to know, which is why we call this part of the presentation culture in transition. 
There have been three C's in media. There have been an incredible change. Young people are now in charge, and they challenge how they consume culture. I'm going to explain these in some detail, so just bear with me. It used to be that you had a fairly limited amount of media options. You had to go buy a CD at a record store. You used a VHS player if you wanted to watch a movie at home, and even then, you probably waited a year until it was in theaters. Uh, you had maybe 30 channels on your television. We're talking only 15 years ago. Uh, you would go to a, a, a store. You would have to sort of listen to broadcast radio. Everything was sort of dictated on somebody else's schedule, and you had limited options. But things changed. We went from CDs to MP3s. The gaming consoles young people used became more sophisticated and changed incredibly quickly. We expected that the cell phone we carry, which 10 years ago we were thrilled just to be able to make phone calls on, now has to play MP3s, show you television. It's got to have a camera in it. It needs to be able to send and receive email. It's got to make coffee and shoot laser beams. <laughs> We've also seen a complete reversal in the way culture is distributed. And now, a huge speed of change in culture is regular. And young people, especially, have an on-demand culture, which they navigate either through their phone or their computer. 